trying to keep an eye on my answer key. And Jacob, I was worried he was going to forget about those fillets, but not. no, sir. He knows what's going on. And so we're going to see an answer coming in here to the chat. Any moment, any moment. What is the mass of this part? And we're watching both of our runners. And it uh, looks like Jacob comes in with an answer. 2.893. And that is not correct. That is not correct with intolerance. 2.893 is not correct with intolerance. And so now we're going to uh, take a look at Mr. Alex, who comes in with an answer. 2.84. That is not correct. Mr. Alex, 2.834. That is not correct either. Just one. I'm just going to remove one. Here we go. Shuffle, 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 and go. Sorry if anybody guessed 10. Uh, John G. Sorry, John. Uh, I just wanted to remove that one. I, I, have, I have my reasons. Okay. What a fantastic starting model here. Guys, we're going to start out with challenge number seven. You know, this tournament, there's, there's, I think there's 15 countries being represented. 15 countries, five CAD systems, 15 countries, one world champion. And the very first matchup here, the flags are very, very similar. Um, and I just think it's cool when stuff like that happens. Guys, this is the kind of stuff that I get excited about. When we, when we don't have power, this is the kind of stuff we get excited about. All right, here we go. This very first CAD versus CAD battle in our world championship. Got to win two points to move on. This very first battle in our world championship CAD versus CAD Begins in three, two, one, go. What is the mass of this part in x.xxx pounds? So two users from Europe, the very first challenge, it's in pounds. What do you think about that chat? That's pretty interesting, huh? These guys already grabbed a screenshot and they are already jumping into their CAD system. So I'm not gonna belabor this at all. I'm just gonna jump right in and watch how they do it. So we see here, this is like a uh, flange coupling, a part you might see in some type of a plumbing or gas application. We see on the left, Jacob is opting to sketch this thing out the way that it looks in the cross section. And then he's gonna perform what's called a revolve. You'll notice there that he's using what's called a doubled dimension in SolidWorks. So he's able to create the dimension right to the center line and then cross over that center line and and give himself that nice doubled dimension. And uh, here you see he's doing the same thing with that outer flange dimension. Uh, a lot of these parts here are tier three parts. That means we're going to be seeing a lot of symmetry, a lot of uh, a lot of revolved parts, a lot of extruded parts. And we see this very first one here is indeed a revolved part. So we see Jacob there working from the bottom, kind of working his way up to that central flange area. On the other hand, you see Mr. Alex has recognized that this thing has symmetry. And so he's deciding to model up what looks to me like half of the model and we're going to see how he handles that to get to the second half you'll notice here that when it comes to speed modeling it's not just about speed and making a sloppy model it's about making a model that can be parametrically sound a model that can be edited and a lot of times that means taking advantage of symmetry and so now we see mr alex really kind of putting on a clinic on that front opting to just create half the part and he was already able to draw first blood there getting that first revolve in place even though it just looks like a top hat uh, he was able to get that now we see jacob catching up to him though and now he has extruded everything uh the question is on the left there with jacob modeling up half of the model is that going to end up costing him uh because that means that he's going to have to or the entire model excuse me jacob modeling the entire model is that going to end up costing him because that means he's going to have to add those chamfers on both ends but he was able to add those chamfers, no problem. Shout out to Jacob. And on the other hand, you see that Mr. Alex was able to get in there and create that chamfer. And uh, guys, if we're imagining that this model is created in several phases, we can see that both of our runners are kind of coming down to the final phase. Looks like Mr. Alex is getting an error there. He's gonna go through and use repair sketch to try to clean that up. He's gonna try and figure out what's going on. Jacob on the left, adding in those holes, looking down from the top. We've got a pattern of just four holes here, looking down from the top. And uh, we see here, Mr. Alex on the right. He's got that shape in place. He got it finished up. You see Jacob on the left getting those four holes in place. Guys, I think we're going to end up seeing an answer coming in here pretty soon. I'm trying to keep an eye on my answer key. And Jacob, I was worried he was going to forget about those fillets, but not. No, sir. He knows what's going on. And so we're going to see an answer coming in here to the chat. Any moment, any moment. What is the mass of this part? And 
We're watching both of our runners. And it uh, looks like Jacob comes in with an answer. 2.893. And that is not correct. That is not correct with intolerance. 2.893 is not correct with intolerance. And so now we're going to uh, take a look at Mr. Alex, who comes in with an answer. 2.84. Wait, what is that? 2.84. That is not correct. Mr. Alex, 2.834. That is not correct either. Sorry, guys, the light in this room is like kind of messing with me. 2.893, not correct. 2.834, not correct. So both of them, uh, both of our runners have made some type of an error. Both of our runners need to go through, re-examine their design, see if they can figure out where that error is. You're allowed to answer once incorrectly, and then your second answer is kind of your final chance. If you get it wrong the second time, then that's going to be it, and that is going to establish what we call the clock of doom. So it's kind of nerve-wracking here to decide if you're going to answer the second time or if you're going to, you know, take your time and, and keep checking because you don't know what the other user is doing. You know, it's, this is uh, what makes these tournaments so exciting. What a great way to kick off this tournament. Guys, if you're enjoying this tournament, now that we're back on the rails, be sure to hit the like button. Be sure to subscribe to the channel. This is pretty darn exciting. So you can see here that Jacob is bringing up a mass, but he's not... He's not sure if he wants to commit. If he commits to this mass now and it's incorrect, then he is going to be out for this round. Oh, but he does commit 2.871. And guys, that is not correct. 2.871, and that is not correct. And so it is going to be up to Mr. Alex. Mr. Alex comes in with an answer. 2.871. Eight, six, four, and that is correct. And congratulations to Mr. Alex. He did it. He got it correct. Wow, 2.864 is the correct answer. And guys, we're going to bring up some music here. So that was the kickoff to our 2025 World Championship of 3D CAD speed modeling. What did you guys think about that matchup? Let me know down below in the comments. I really enjoyed seeing how Mr. Alex was able to implement some best practices like utilizing symmetry to make it easier for him to figure out and repair the error with the model and ultimately come up with the correct answer. That is a really good best practice in SolidWorks and it was awesome to see. So I I can't wait to see the next battle between these two and if you like these kinds of 2d to 3d challenges we've got a library of over 200 challenges many of them real world parts like this flange coupling and you can practice refining your 3d cad best practices regardless of what cad system you're working in visit us at twotalltoby.com sign up for an account for free and i look forward to seeing all of you in the next cad vs cad tournament highlight